Hi guys, I hope you're well and are having a lovely day so far. Today I thought I'd put together an autumnal glowy skin and deep lip makeup tutorial for you. Previously I did an autumnal everyday makeup look using drugstore makeup, so I thought I'd turn the tables and use luxury makeup this time. But I've also listed and talked about a few drugstore alternatives while doing this makeup look in case you didn't want to splash out on the high-end products which I'm using. I think that in autumn a kind of glowing skin and deep lip is just a fail-safe makeup look. You can use it in the evening in the daytime whenever you just want to know that your makeup is kind of classic and beautiful. I just absolutely love this look and I hope you guys do too. If you do then keep on watching so you can see how I created this makeup look. So I brought you a little bit closer so that you can see what I'm doing. I hope the lighting's okay. I'm using natural light for once. The window is right there so I'm hoping that it's um, not looking too crazy. So so far on my skin I've already used the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. Now I know that this is quite pricey but I really think it is a fabulous moisturiser especially for this time of the year when your skin is probably not its best. Mine in particular is dry one minute, oily the next minute and I'm getting quite dry on the forehead so I need something that's really moisturising. So, so far this is all I've got on my skin um, and it's a really lovely thick consistency cream but I do find that it sinks in very quickly so I'm a big big fan of the magic cream. However of course that's not in everybody's budget so something else which I really love is the original astral cream. Now this is something which has pretty much been unchanged for like 40 years plus and for good reason it's a really good cream it's very very moisturizing so I'd say if your skin needs some moisture then this is a really good one to go for. It doesn't give quite um, doesn't give quite the same finish as the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream obviously because there's such a huge difference in the price you wouldn't think that they're exactly the same but this is a really good drugstore alternative and I think this is about like two pounds or something crazy so yeah definitely give this a try although some people have said that it can bring them out on the face so maybe test a small patch first because it's quite strong because it's so hydrating. So to give my skin a lovely radiant glow I'm going to use the Elamasca Radiance Veil Primer. Now this has got a few shimmery particles in it so if you don't like your skin to be too shimmery then this is probably not the one to try um, but for this time of year I don't have a natural glow to my skin so I definitely need to add a little bit of radiance so this is perfect for that and I'm just popping it um, on different points of my face and using my fingers to blend it in. I don't actually know um, of any drugstore primers that have got this kind of shimmer in them but if you are just looking for a drugstore primer in general then I highly recommend the Rimmel. I think it's called the Rimmel Fix and Perfect Primer. That's one of my favourite drugstore primers at the moment. It's nice and hydrating but it really um, keeps your makeup in place for a really long time so that's a good drugstore primer if you're on the market for one. So you can see already the Ilamasca Radiance Veil has just given my skin almost like a moony, moony, <laughs> moonlight sheen to it which is really lovely just on its own but I find under foundation it really helps to give like a warm lip from within glow which is exactly what I was after with this makeup look. And then to make my skin even more glowy I'm using the By Terry Light Expert Click Brush Illuminating Flawless Foundation. So this is foundation and a brush in one, um, but personally I don't really like using the brush that it comes with, I prefer my usual brush, so I actually just press the button a couple of times and you can see it comes out the top, which I find really exciting, um, and then I pop it on the back of my hand, then use my fingers just to dab it on my face. So I'm going to use my Zoeva 102 Silk Finish Brush um, to blend this in. I'm afraid I haven't had time to clean it so it's a little bit dirty but still does the same job. So I'm just really quite roughly blending this in all over my face. So with regards to a drugstore dupe for this one, I'd probably say the Rimmel Match Perfection Foundation and I know I go on about that foundation all the time but genuinely I think it is my favourite foundation of all time whether it's drugstore or high end. Um, it just gives a really lovely glow and really good coverage so I'd say the Rimmel Match Perfection is a good drugstore alternative to the By Terry because again I know that not everybody has By Terry kind of budget but if you do um, like to splash out on your makeup then this I think it's quite a new launch from By Terry highly highly recommend this one. Okay so hopefully you can see that this foundation has given my skin a lovely glow, quite a sheer finish, it's given enough coverage but without really caking the skin and makeup which is not the kind of thing that you want to be doing if you want to get a nice glow to your skin. Um, this foundation does have a tendency to stick to dry patches though so it's really important that you use a nice moisturiser beforehand and then use a brush such as the Zoeva to really blend it in otherwise it can cling to any dry patches of skin. So next I need to use some bronzer 
and for that I'm going to use um, this new Dior bronzer. This is the Dior Skin Nude Air Tan Bronzer and it looks a little something like this and very very similar finish wise to the Bourjois Chocolate Bronzer which I absolutely love but this just has like a slightly more expensive looking finish to it and I'm going to apply that with the Charlotte Tilbury, Tilbury? Tilbury Bronzing Brush. So it's quite pigmented so I only need to dab the brush onto it a few times before going in with a figure of three starting on the cheekbone area and then figure of three onto the face. So I always start with this figure of three because I find it's quite flattering on building some shape into the face and then I go in on any areas that the sun would naturally catch so that's forehead and nose and chin as well. And by leaving this kind of T-zone area free, it creates more of a luminous look to the face. So because I've gone around the outside, done a little bit of cheekbone and then under the chin, but I've not really touched this area or here on the cheeks as well, it just makes the face look a little bit more glowing um, without even adding any highlighter or anything. So I really love doing that when I'm looking for a very glowing autumnal makeup look, or any time of year. To be honest, I think this looks really nice in summer. It makes it look like you've naturally caught the sun if you've got a bit of bronzer up here and on the cheeks as well. So then because I can't really concentrate until my brows are done, I'm going to do those next. And a recent um, discovery slash obsession of mine is the Tom Ford Brow Sculptor. Now this little pencil um, is really fantastic because it's got the scroll up, almost waxy pencil in one end, and then a spoolie brush on the other, but also hidden inside, if I can remember where it is, yeah, here, is a little sharpener. So you never need to worry about your pencil going blunt, which is amazing. I actually did a whole blog post on this, which I'll link down below if you want to see my full review. Um, but for now I'm just going to use the spoolie actually first to brush through the brows. Just create a bit of shape first, and then I'm going to use the coloured end just to fill in any gaps. So I've got the shade Taupe, which I think for me is an absolutely perfect shade. There is one lighter, but I think even if you're blonde, this is a really good colour for just adding a little bit of definition, definition? definition into the brows, but without looking as though you've absolutely painted your brows on. And this is almost, actually it pretty much is a perfect colour match for my brows. So if you've got kind of brownie blonde brows like me, then definitely go for O2 taupe in this one. So I put most of the colour in this area closest to my nose because I find that my brows are really gappy there. Um, and then I just want to add a little bit more colour and depth to the rest of the brows. So I bring it along the arch and down to the tail of the brows as well. And I think for me this is the most natural looking brow product that I've come across. I find that even the pencils like the Anastasia Brow Wiz, they really look as though you, you can almost see the lines you've drawn in the brows. Whereas because this is almost like a crayon consistency, you can't tell anywhere where you've actually applied it. It just looks like your brows are more full, a little bit more depth to the colours. So I've been really loving this one recently. And because it's like a waxy consistency, you don't need to use anything to set them afterwards. So I just finish by using the spoolie again just to comb through and finalise the shape of the brows. So I think my under eye area needs a little bit more brightening, so I'm going to use the By Terry Terribly Denseless Concealer, but a really good drugstore dupe for that is the Barry M Light Reflecting Concealer. I find this one is a little bit more watery, whereas the By Terry has more coverage, so if you do need coverage for dark circles like I do, then I'd recommend the By Terry, but obviously if you haven't got the budget for that, then the Barry M is a great alternative. The under eye bags are not too bad today, but I just want to add a bit of lightness. So I'm just going to add a few dots under the eyes and then blend in with my ring finger. Sometimes if I have any left on my finger, then I'll just pat it onto the cupid's bow. And this is almost like a highlight for the lip area as well. Then if it needs any more blending, I'm going to use my Zoeva. This is the 110 Face Shape Brush and I just tap that. I don't really swirl it around, just tap it to set that into my foundation. You can do this bit before or after the bronzer, I didn't really think I needed it and then did the bronzer and then decided I did, so it doesn't really make too much difference. Usually however I would do it before the bronzer. So next I'm going to pop on some blusher and I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic um, Swish and Pop Blusher in the shade Sex on Fire. Now this has got a really lovely almost purple brownie colour in the middle which is what I'm going to be mainly using. I'm going to swirl the brush over the whole area but mainly in the middle bit. I'm just applying that to the apples of my cheeks. I'm not going to go overboard on the blusher because it's more about the glow than the, um, than the blush. 
And a good drugstore alternative for this is actually one of the new H&M blushes. So I have got um, the H&M blush in the shade Cameo Brown. So if you have a look inside of the shade, you'll see it's quite similar to that middle shade in the Charlotte Tilbury palette. Pretty darn close. I mean, I'd say the H&M is a little bit darker, but because it's quite sheer, it comes out as almost identical colour-wise. I wouldn't quite call it a dupe, just because I find that the Charlotte Tilbury one applies a bit nicer and um, lasts longer, but it's a good alternative. So the next thing I'm going to do is use the Charlotte Tilbury Rock and Coal, is that right? Yeah, Rock and Coal um, Liquid Eye Pencil, and this is their Eye Cheat. So it's actually a skin coloured pencil, which is great if you want to make your eyes look bigger, which is great if you're doing an overall bright and glowy autumnal makeup look. So I'm just applying this into the waterline of my eyes. And to be honest, I haven't found a good drugstore alternative for this because this, unlike so many nude eyeliners I've tried before, is actually a really natural colour, it's not bright white, um, and it lasts so long. When you consider that you're putting it on the waterline, it's amazing how long this actually lasts. And the pencil itself is really soft, so you don't need to worry about poking yourself in the eye or having a really scratchy pencil on your waterline. It's almost like, I think it's called, yeah, the liquid eye pencil, and it is so soft on the eye area. So hopefully the camera's picked up, this has just made my eyes generally look bigger and whiter and brighter which to be honest in this time of year I really do need, my eyes tend to get a bit hooded and I can get, you know, my eyes just look small and I want to look more awake so absolutely love using the Charlotte Tilbury for that. Then I'm going to go on to eyeshadow and I'm currently trying out the Ombre Rouge eyeshadow palette from Becca. I've not really used Becca, that was upside down, Becca. I've not really used Becca eyeshadows before, I'm quite new to them, but this palette has just got so many beautiful autumnal colours in it that I couldn't wait to try it out. So this is, this is my first time using this palette. So I'm going to go in with the lightest shade first, and I'm going to use my Zoeva um, Luxe Petite Crease Brush just to apply this onto the brow bone area. And I find using a light shade on the brow bone just really helps to lift the brow, which is great if you're doing a really light, bright makeup look. This is powdering quite a lot, like it's kind of flaking off onto the palette, but maybe it's because it's the first time that I'm using it. Next I'm going to use the middle shade, and I'm going to do this all over the lid, and then blend that out into the upper lid area. Again, it's quite powdery, so definitely need to pat it off. So that shade I absolutely love, hopefully it's coming up on camera, but it's almost like a pinky brown, which I absolutely love that kind of shade for autumn, and I think this will go really well with loads of my lip colour favourites. I've been loving like browny, taupey lip colours, so I think this whole palette in general will go really well with them. For this look I'm doing a slightly darker lip, but I think just any autumn makeup look, this has got all your eyeshadow needs covered on it. And the shades are really blendable as well, so I'm just using a Too Faced makeup brush um, and blending it all over the lid. So even though these are actually matte shades in the palette, they're coming out with a little bit of almost like a sheen, almost, again like I described my skin, like a moonlit sheen to the actual lid. So it's nice because it's not a flat colour. I find with matte shadows sometimes they can just look really flat, but hopefully the camera is picking up that they are actually giving quite a nice sheen. Um, so next I'm going to go in with a darker shade and I'm going to use this all over the crease just to add a little bit of um, depth to the eye area. Okay, I'm not going to spend too much longer on the eyes because I did want this look to be more about the lips. So I'm not going to apply any more eyeshadow. I'm really happy with these shades. I've never really worn purple on the eyes before, but really been liking the shades that are in this one. So next I'm going to go in with some mascara. And I'm going to use my usual rose gold tweezman eyelash curlers and then my new Tom Ford mascara. And this is the Extreme Volume Mascara. And I've been using this pretty much every single day since I got it because I'm just addicted to the volume that it gives my lashes. So because this mascara gives such black lashes, I find that I don't even need to use an eyeliner, which is good because sometimes I find that eyeliner and a dark lip just look too much. So absolutely loving the Tom Ford Extreme Lash Mascara. I think a good drugstore alternative for this would be the new Rimmel Super Curler, I think it's called, because that one really does deliver very separated voluminous lashes, but it doesn't have quite the intensity of the Tom Ford. But again, this is pricey, so the Rimmel, I'd say, is a really good drugstore alternative. And then before we move on to lips, I'm just going to add a little bit more highlight because this is a glowy autumnal look after all. So I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Norman Parkinson 
um, Dreamy Glow Highlighter. This is just absolutely beautiful, the packaging and what's inside is a gorgeous kind of pinky highlight which is again lovely for adding a bit of warmth to the skin during autumn. So I'm using actually the Charlotte Tilbury contour brush just because I really like the shape of this one. I'm going to add this, oh, hair in the way, and I'm going to add this on the top of my cheekbones just very lightly and then even under the brow as well. And again, there's a really good drugstore alternative to that one, and it's the Makeup Revolution Vivid Baked Highlighter. This is one of my favourite drugstore highlighters of all time. It gives a really similar finish to the Charlotte Tilbury. Not quite as um, kind of skin perfecting. I find this one does bring out any pores and can make my skin look a little bit dry. But if you are after just a glowing effect, then this is a really good alternative to the Charlotte Tilbury. So I've just applied it to the tops of my cheekbones and under the brow area. Not going too crazy because the skin's quite glowy already, but I think this just adds a lovely finish to the look. And then because I'm Doing quite a dark lip, the first thing I need to do is use a liner, but because I don't have a liner that perfectly matches the lipstick that I'm choosing, I'm going to use the Estee Lauder and this is the Stay In Place Lip Pencil in Clear, and this is amazing because you can use it with any of your lipsticks. It's a, oh, it's got a lip brush on one side, but then I'm going to be using the pencil side which has got a texture which I'd almost kind of say is like a thick Vaseline texture so obviously it's very resistant to lipstick so it's important that you draw just outside your lip line again there's a good drugstore alternative and it's the Rimmel this is the Moisture Renew Universal Transparent Lip Liner I find that the Estee Lauder one does work a little bit better but Rimmel again great drugstore alternative so I'm going to line the outside of my lips with the Estee Lauder pencil So it's completely transparent, so you don't need to be too careful about where you're putting it. Just make sure that it really does touch the lip, but on the outside, because then you'll find that your lip colour doesn't bleed into the skin, which is really important if you're using a darker lip colour. So I definitely recommend using a liner that will act as a barrier to, um, to the skin. And the lipstick that I'm going to go for is one of my new Urban Decay lipsticks. I absolutely love their Matte Revolution lipsticks. And this is in the shade Shame. really like the packaging. It's kind of, it's not... Almost, almost rose gold, it's almost rose gold um, and then it's got this lovely deep burgundy colour I'm almost too scared to put deep colours like this straight onto the lips so I'm going to be using my Delilah lip liner pencil pencil, lip liner brush just so I can be really precise with the application of this And that's it, this is the finished makeup look. I really, really love this whole glowing skin and deep dramatic look. I think it's just the perfect everyday or evening special occasion, just such a classic look for autumn. And I think that all the products that I've used here, I mean, obviously because they're high-end products, they give such a beautiful finish, but I hope that my drugstore alternatives have been useful for you as well if you don't want to splash out on the high-end um, products which I used. So I'm going to leave uh, links down below to all the products and the brushes that I used and also the drugstore alternatives and if you guys know of any drugstore alternatives to the products which I used then please leave the links um, or please leave the product names down below so that anybody watching can check them out as well because I know that I didn't have good drugstore alternatives for absolutely everything. Especially the lipstick actually, I'm yet to find a really lovely drugstore deep plummy kind of purpley red autumnal lipsticks. If you know of any then please leave in the comments down below. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you have done. Please let me know if you decide to recreate this look. I absolutely love seeing autumnal makeup looks and I think this is just such a lovely classic one. I'd love to know if you guys do recreate it. If you do then tweet me. I'm at Fashion Mumbler and I'd love to see your photos. Hello little man. A special little someone has come to say hello. What do you think? <laughs> the only thing about having a dark lip is that I can't kiss him for ages until it kind of sets because um yeah, we don't want to have a purple dog. I'm going to put you down, little man. So if you're new to this channel and you enjoyed this video, then it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe. So click the little red button down in one of these corners. Um, and if you do, then I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.